Hi there and welcome to part 2 of how I fixed the alignment on my Porsche Cayman 981 GT4. If you haven't seen part 1, please go check that video out first, it will make a lot more sense. In this video, part 2, we will go over all the work that was done on my car to bring the alignment back into spec just as I liked it. And then in part 3, I road test the car to see if I can tell any differences from the alignment work done on this car. Enjoying life and cars to the max. Right, so Pete's done his magic on the car. The bit I was trying to explain to you with the shims, and Pete will do this again and correct me if I'm wrong, is this is basically how my um, alignment was on the front of the car. The shims, uh, let's say it starts like that, the shims will push out the bottom, which gives you more camber, but then he's also pushed out the top. So he's effectively done that and that, and it's basically extended the width of the car. So we'll go through, Pete. Pete's obviously worked on the car. I see a lot of green on the screen here now. So um, here's a quick look at the screen and we're now gonna go over to Pete. So Pete, uh, how are we looking? Are we in the final state? What have you done to my car? Are, and how have so, you got it green, mate? So remember, it's not all about being green. Okay. What's more important is symmetry. Now for you and for your car, we've opted for keeping it standard i.e. all in the green, but the way that we've achieved that is a little bit different, hence the shims. Now, these are the shims, if you can yeah, see those. I was a little bit, you know, because I always thought shims are meant for people that do loads of track days and... So ooh. ordinarily, that is quite right. We would put these in the lower arms, it would make the front of the car wider, and those people that want a bit more camber, where the top mount is constrained, this will get us more negative camber. It's a motorsport part, you can buy these from Porsche, the GT3s and the RSs, you know, these are like candy for those boys. Um, but we've used these for, a, for an alternative mode. We want to give you more stability, a wider front track, and then we've used the top mount just to trim that and pull the wheels back out. So the front of your car is now 10 mil wider than it was when it arrived. So it's effectively like having wheel spaces, but without having without wheel spaces. Without the negatives of wheel spaces. And what yeah. would the negatives of wheel spaces be? Um, extra strain on the wheel bearings, it increases your scrub radius. Um, and um, yeah, just generally more load on the suspension where these have no negative effects on, on the suspension. Um, plus from a, a warranty point of view on a modern car, um, these aren't going to affect your warranty where a wheel spacer might do. Gotcha. Wow. And then just out of interest, like when the cars leave the factory, do they have any shims in there to start they with? They do. They have the uh, Litronic bracket, which is your uh, headlight and ride height sensor, which is about a two mil bracket and they also have a six mil shim from the factory. So okay. you've now got an extra five mil on top of that per side. Wow. And then just out of interest, would there be any reason to remove the shims? Potentially, yeah. We okay. have got people out there that are using GT4s as their only car. It's their daily only car. And we've set them up effectively like a GTS because they're wearing you know, road sport tires rather than sticky tires. We've raised the car slightly. So we've given it a bit more compliance, a bit more travel, and we've actually reduced the cambers further because they've been more interested in tyre wear rather than cornering wow. speeds. There, there was something Chris mentioned, I'm not sure if we can get the, the numbers off him, but the Cup 2s had a certain rated camber angle, I think. Around two degrees, Around yes. two, and then because I'm now PS4S, yeah. the camber should be... Up to two degrees. Up to two on the Cup 2s. Yeah. And no, the, more than two on the Cup 2s okay. and up to two on the PS4. Wow. So I had no idea that a tyre is actually rated by Michelin to have For a the range. Amount of camber. Yeah, 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 Correct. that's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. So you're in the you're in the sweet spot now for the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's where if you were to put Cup 2's back on whilst your geometry is still standard for Porsche, it's suboptimal to run a Cup 2 tyre. You know what, Brian, this is the first time actually you probably looked at it. The rear is totally symmetrical. Like is is that are we, did we just get lucky here? Because no, we always pride ourselves on being able to get all of the values where possible to within two minutes. So symmetry is king. As I said before, it wouldn't matter if the whole page was red. As long as the car is symmetrical, it would at least drive in a straight line. Wow. So I've tried really hard to make sure that these are all exactly the same. The fact you put the shims in, that doesn't show up in these readings per se, does it? Other than, uh, you'll notice if we go off what the previous readings were on the caster value. So if I pull it up down here for you. So when you came in, your front caster values, if you can see that, 
were down at 928s and 923s. They were quite low. Okay. By adding the shims, those caster values have now come up to just under 10 degrees. So whilst we increase the front track, because the radius arm or the diagonal arm isn't elastic, as you make the front of the car wider, it pulls the wheels forward. So the only way that I guess on paper you would know that the shims are there is because the front casters are now higher than they were before gotcha. by about half a degree. Wow. That's, I mean, I, that is just amazing. I, I know it's, it's raining a lot down there, so I'm not sure if you're going to get a chance to do a after. Well, we are going to drive it. <laughs> okay, we are okay. going to drive it. There you go. That's, that, that should be fun. That's, that's amazing. So thank you very much for doing that work there. Um, you know, you said something about, um, on, I think when I got my 987 here, it was about once you've set it up, you take, you roll the car on the ramp and you bring it back we on again. We remeasure it. So that's is right. this, have you done that bit already done while I was twice. drinking tea? Okay. Yeah. Done right. that twice while you've been drinking tea. <laughs> so we always measure, um, measure twice, cut once if you like. Um, we pride ourselves on repeatability. So I want wow. to be able to set these, push the car off the ramp, ask the equipment to forget what I've done and then remeasure it and we should get the same results. Wow, awesome. And if I were to look at the top mounts now, are they generally centred? Almost exactly in the same place as each other. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Well, we, we should notice the difference then, shouldn't we? I should think so. Thank you very yeah. much. Well, I think um, once, once Pete's finished setting up here, we're going to bring the car down, take these alignment sensors off the wheel, give it, and I'll probably film the after drive. I didn't film the one before because it's very similar to when I had my 987. So it's raining quite a lot now, but if Pete can sort of actually tell the difference, that would be amazing. And then it'll be my turn on the way home, enjoying life and cars to the max. See you in a bit. Oh wow! Well Bloody hell, I got a lot of catching up to do. Yeah.